All right, let's update to 1.21.10. Man. All right, we found some back and tell once more. And in this tutorial, we're updating our fabric tutorial project right here from 121.6 to 121.10. Couple of disclaimers here at the very beginning. Number one, if you come from 121.1, you need to first go through all of the rest of the update tutorials in order to update to this. Good luck with that journey. It's a long thing. Second thing, I do not recommend to update. I still recommend to stay on 121.1 because it's just the best version for modding right now. It is. That's my opinion. Um, you can disagree with it, but that's just still what I'm saying. I believe that it is still the best version. I'm just hoping that 122 comes out at some point, okay? Uh, at this point, I'm not even hoping that it's coming out soon, just at some point at all, okay? Maybe next year, at some point next year, right? Maybe maybe it could be a Christmas gift to 2026. Please, Ojang, please. But regardless, how are we going to update? We're going to update, of course, via the developer web website over here. We can see the changes right here. So there's going to be the new versions. And then also there is a blog post right here, which has all of the changes listed. I will link both of this as well as the developer website, of course, in the description below as well as well as all of the code will be available to you too i'm gonna update i'm gonna basically copy this over from a from my project that i've already started right here so there's gonna be the versions they might have actually updated over here no we seem oh it's actually 17.3 though that is that we can update that we definitely can and the rest actually has stayed the same that's awesome when in the build the gradle file we want to update to 11 111 snapshot and we want to go to the gradle wrapper properties over here because this needs to update to 8.14 gradle and i believe those are the changes we need in this case so we can click the load rail changes button or open the gradle tab and click the reload button as well this once again takes anywhere from a couple of seconds to a minute or so in order to update and then we can change the code in whatever way we might need to and there we go build successful in 46 seconds and let's take a look at what has changed the two big changes are the particles interestingly enough so particle has changed as well as the block entity renderer oh boy this has that definitely a little bit crazy but luckily we're going to be able to implement it entirely. So the block entity renderers now also require, similar to the entities that we've seen previously, the render states. So in the block entity renderer package, we're going to make the pedestal block entity render state class over here in this case. And this is going to extend from the block entity render state class. Now, what is the render state? High level overview. Instead of having access to the block entity instead of the render method, we will now have access to the render state. So anything that we want to use instead of our render method, we now need to add this to the pedestal block entity render state class. So this is going to have the public block position. This is going to be our light position. This is needed so that we can determine what the light is of the item that we want to render. We want the world, the so public world. This is going to be the block entity world. We also want the uh, public float rotation. This is, of course, the rotation of the item itself. And finally, we're going to have the final item render state. Render, render state. There you go. It's the item render state equal to the a new item render state. This is needed to actually render the item. We'll see this in just a second. But that is the entire render state that we need. And the rest happens in the block entity renderer. First of all, inside of the implemented interface over here, there's a second generic, and that's going to be the pedestal block entity render state. And now we can hover over this to implement both the create render state method as well as the new render method. Uh, let's get the light level over here below. And per usual, of course, the code is all going to be available to you in the description below. So no worries there at all. The old render method, we're just going to like basically copy the entirety of the code from there and paste it into the new one and delete the old one. And you can see a couple of things are missing. That's because, well, we no longer have access to the entity. The item renderer as well as the stack, gone. So we start now with matrices.push. And here, item renderer, render item, also gone. So that is basically the first step on how the render method should now look like. Now, we no longer have access to the entity, but we have access to the render state. So the rendering rotation is now going to be gotten by exactly using the state.rotation. This is the field that we've literally just created inside of our custom render state class. And that is now what we need to use. But the question is, where do we even get this render state from? Well, we get this from the create render state method. 
here we need to make a new pedestal block entity render state. However, you might cry out and say, wait a second, but we have not yet sort of set what the rotation actually is. This is true. This happens in the update render state method over here that we have to overwrite very importantly. And here we basically have access to both the block entity as well as the render state. And this gets called, I believe, every tick or every frame. And this is where we pass in any sort of, well, any values to our render state. So we can say state dot light position is equal to block entity dot get pause, right? So we're basically setting the light position of the render state to whatever the position is of the block that we're currently, of the block entity that we're currently rendering. The same thing goes for the block entity world. This is equal to block entity dot get world. And then here is state dot rotation. So state dot rotation is going to be equal to block entity dot get a rendering rotation. Awesome. Finally, how do we actually render the item? Because, well, right now the item is gone, right? We no longer have the, the item renderer and all of that stuff. Well, this now works via the item model manager. Sounds a little complicated, but it's not that bad. We're going to make a new field, private final item model manager. This is going to be our item model manager. Inside of the pedestal block entity renderer constructor, we're going to say item model manager equal to context.item model manager. So nothing too crazy for now. In the update render state method, we now want to basically clear this manager and update it to a specific item. So we want to say this is the item that you should render. So this is going to be item model manager dot clear and update. First thing, state dot item render state. Second parameter, block entity dot get stack zero. So then we have the item display context of fixed. We then do block entity dot get world. Then this is a null because we're not holding the item and the seed I just put in a zero. I'm not quite sure what the seed does, but zero seems to work totally fine. So that is the item model manager now sort of set up. And now we want to, or rather the item model manager has cleared the render state. I'm not quite exactly sure what the what the um the, the behind the scenes is, but basically we now can in the render method after you know rotating the matrix, we can say state dot item render state dot render. So we're now rendering the item render state, pass in matrices, pass in the queue, passing get light level. Here we need the state dot get block entity world, state dot position or pause. After the first closing parenthesis, we then also want to put in the overlay texture of default UV. And finally, the this is the outline color. This is just going to be a zero for now as well. Highly recommend, of course, you can try test this out. I don't, I, I actually don't know if there's going to be an outline color that changes over here, but there you go. This is actually the entire change of the block entity renderer. Like I said, the big change here is, of course, that now the block entity renderers also use the render states. I suspect that this has something to do with the Vibrant Visuals update, that they're now using the render states in all of their renderers, but overall, nothing too crazy. Now, when it comes to other changes, um, we do need to, be I believe, go through a couple of things, and that is the isClient over here has now changed to isClient method. So we can no longer use the isClient method field we now need to use the method makes sense anyway i i don't know why the field was ever like non-private but you know there you go that's totally okay and i believe that now we oh yeah the big one is the particle that's the pink garden particle and then we're just gonna go through by pressing the run button and then just going through all of the rest that pops up the uh, particle actually not that bad instead of a sprite billboard particle it is now a billboard particle this requires in the super a, another thing, and that is the sprite provider that get first, right? So it's going to get the first sprite right here. We no longer have access to the set sprite for H, but we also don't really need this. Uh, instead, what we do is we hover over this to implement the get render type method. So this is the same as here, just that is now render type. And the render type here is going to be render type dot particle atlas translucent. We can delete the get type method and in the factory, very straightforward, as another parameter, we simply want to add a random over here. This is net microutil random math, and that is going to be random. And that is it. That is the pink corner particle updated as well. And then let's just uh, click the run button, and we're just going to see. I believe there's going to be a couple more errors that's going to, that are going to pop up. Yep, that is the. I believe this is just. I don't even know what the what the change here is. I think it's just uh, the name has changed slightly. The chair. Oh yeah, and then basically the rest here, is inside of entities, you no longer have get world. It is now get entity world. I don't know why that's the change, but that's okay. 
no worries at all that that basically it still works exactly the same way so we can just continue to click the run button or we can also just look at the problems right here and go through all of those this is the mantis renderer indeed this is the render method because this i believe takes in yeah, yeah there's no more vertex consumer so if we were to now override the render method you can see we get the ordered render queue uh, command queue as well as the render state uh, or the camera render state it's a little bit crazy it's a little bit different but basically we can literally just change this out and then just pass this into the super instead and there you go like i said all of the code is available to you in the description below as well so no worries there at all let's continue the growth chamber is get world again this is once again get entity world we continue to the mantis entity get entity world nothing too crazy mantis renderer i think we just did that mod items here but a spawn egg we no longer pass in the mod entities instead in the settings we now call the spawn egg method and i assume this adds a component to the item stack uh, let's just run this again and see there's the render method for the tomahawk renderer yeah absolutely this also proves to be an issue because we no longer can use the item renderer get glint consumer and i have yet to be like yet to find the solution for this so basically while we can override the render method and have the other stuff in here if i were to copy this over what you'll find is that hey we no longer have access to the vertex consumers and uh, i have yet to basically do this properly so sadly uh what we'll most likely just have to do is just basically comment this out and the tomahawk currently does not render itself that uh, is one sort of uh, thing that just does not work uh let's run this again and let's see it's just a bunch of get worlds get entity world bada bing bada boom there you go there you go there you go and then the chisel item i believe has a similar thing no not quite actually screen has shift down no longer works this is now minecraft client dot get instance it is called is shift pressed there you go uh do note of course that if you use this then you need to make sure that you are on the client i believe both not number one the append tooltip method is always only called on the client i'm pretty sure number two it is deprecated anyway so i believe that it shouldn't be um it, we shouldn't use it anyway but last time i believe in 121.5 or 0.6 when it was changed we said to just keep it for the time being and that's okay here is client once again just using the method and finally same thing here get world entity world right here bada bing bada boom and i believe we have it i believe those are all the changes that we need to do for the time being that is it definitely not too bad let's just i guess let's just run this and let's see right i mean there might be some other changes that are going to come you know later down the line as well who knows i'm just out here hoping for 122 okay that's that's all i can tell you man that's that's, that's really all i can tell you and welcome in 121.10 let's go so of course a couple of things do not work like i said the tomahawk is not going to properly uh function in this case let's just get a couple of things out here and let's just see whether or not they work or not but i'm pretty sure everything should work so if you go down with a hammer you can see the hammer still works that's pretty good we can also still do that we see the um different um different particles over here you can see the, the particles work as well the pedestal works wonders too absolutely fantastic we can still sit on the chair and then i believe this is actually another rack or end or uh, end stone i don't know which one i did i did end stone okay i specifically changed that no no no, no. go here nope also doesn't work what is what did i set this to <laughs> oh i said it's a stone okay well that's um i would have never guessed that one before so that's uh that's pretty good <laughs> okay okay stone there you go and of course it still grows a nice little tree that is awesome uh, the bow i think nope the bow also works all is well yeah there you go that is um an update to 121.10 oh man right there you have it as per usual all of the code is available to you down below in the description and i'm hoping that next time we uh we talk over here in tutorials is going to be 122 i sort of doubt it but listen okay let's just let's just hope for the best but that's gonna be it for this tutorial right here hope you found this useful and you learned something new and i'll see you all in the next tutorial so yeah.